We're going to look at your internet connection. You may already have one or you may be interested in getting one and most likely today it'll be an ADSL connection and uh, wireless uh, connectivity usually comes with this. So what we want to look at is the interface to your wireless router to make sure that you can maximize the benefits that uh, it offers in terms of connecting up TVs, phones, various other bits and pieces and uh, we also want to look at some settings to make sure it's secured so that other people, malicious people out there, can't use your wireless connection that you're paying good money for to uh, do their own malicious business. So one of the first things uh, that you should look at if you're buying a new connection or already have one is where you physically place uh, your modem router. Uh, it, especially if you're going to use wireless because uh, uh, a line of sight is excellent and certain materials can really mess with the connection speeds. So while it might connect, you'll just get slower speeds. So look around, uh, put it in a place that is going to be in general proximity to the devices that you want connected to it, and certainly don't hide it behind shielded materials like uh, strong metal or thick wood or thick stone walls, uh, because that will affect the performance. It'll still work, but you could get the most out of it just by looking where you place it. Obviously, it's going to have to be placed near your phone connection because ADSL, being the asynchronous digital subscriber line, uh, utilizes the copper uh, framework that is there for all normal phones. So put it in a good spot. And then once you've got it in a good spot and you can connect to it, uh, we'll look at those settings for security, etc. So the first thing we want to do is jump into the router interface. This is something that can be accessed through your normal browser on your computer. Uh, in some cases with routers you'll have to physically plug them into the network cable. Others will automatically have their wireless enabled and as long as you type in the right local address on your browser you'll get it. So we'll do that now. Uh, the one we're setting up today is very generic. It's usually a 192.168.1.1 address and you will see the logon screen for your device. So what you want to do is pop in the administration username and password, which by default will usually be something like username admin, password admin. You want to change that straight away. You want to write it down, store it somewhere secure, and, uh, and not use the default because, again, malicious users out there will, will capitalize on that. So the kind of screen that we see when we jump into our uh, administration page is like this. And what we want to do is look at wireless settings. You'll see the name of your Wi-Fi network. That's called an SSID. Uh, you can either broadcast this or keep it hidden. Uh, generally go with the defaults if you're a first time user. If you know what you're doing, then you can play with it. But the very, very important part of this section is the security key. This is an alphanumeric string that you need to enter for any device to connect and get internet through your wireless modem and router. So we can look at that right here. Once you're happy with what you've set, uh, you save and apply the changes and you'll find your wireless modem, uh, modem and router will restart itself with these new settings and hopefully be much more secure. Now what we want to look at is your ADSL settings in the interface. This is probably the most important part of it because this is what will en actually en enable you to get internet through your ISP, your internet service provider. So you see uh, a usual bunch of fields here, which is your username and password that will be provided by your ISP. The protocol, again, that will be provided by your ISP. Uh, VPI number and VCI. These are settings that are usually pre-configured these days, but if you need to set them up, you'll probably get a sheet from your uh, ISP that will give you the various settings and how to connect it up. So just follow the bouncing ball there and you shouldn't have a problem. Again, once you've put in your unique username and password, save and apply the changes, your modem will restart and then you should be ready to go with the internet. Okay, now that we have a wireless network available to our devices, we need to connect to it with our devices. 
So what we're going to look at here is a laptop and we will connect up to the wireless network that's available in this place. What we do is go down to the taskbar and you will see that uh, we're not connected and that connections are available. So if you click on that, Windows 7 would have automatically started scanning for networks and you'll see a bunch that are available. What you want to do is pick out the one that had the name that you assigned in the interface. So if you wanted to call it Joe's Internet, it should come up as Joe's Internet if that's the SSID assigned to it. So we'll connect to that one and we'll see that it's doing its thing. We've connected uh, uh, successfully. We've put in our security key and then we can open the network and sharing center. This will give us the opportunities to share various things on our laptop with other devices on our local wireless network. Uh, what we want to do here, seeing that we're now nice and connected, is we want to look at our home group settings. There's currently no home group on this network. We could set one up with this laptop and then that would be available to any other device that we put on there. Really useful if you want to share photos to people's phones, smartphones for example, or um, you know, you've uh, got a bunch of photos you took on your phone and you want to download them to your home computer or your home network so that they're available to look on your smart TV, for example. So we've got a lot of options from there once we're connected.